envi- environment of pressure, of um, overachieve, of, you know, you have to be amazing. You have to, like, that extra added pressure at all times literally made me sick. It made me sick. Hi, you guys. Welcome back to my channel. If it's your first time here at Life Journal with Miss GCH, we are so happy that you came to visit us. I hope you will join the family. Click that subscribe button. Don't forget to turn on the notification bell so that you can get all the updates of when I post videos. Now that that's said and done, I want to jump right into today's topic, which is all about therapy for black girls. Due to some recent circumstances and just a few things that have been laid on my heart, I wanted to take this opportunity to talk to you guys and kind of do my part in breaking the stigma around mental health, specifically for um, black women. This is really the first time that I have, I guess on a large platform, publicly talked about my experience with um, therapy. And it's so interesting because uh, if you know anything about my field, I am studying to be a school psychologist and we are considered, like literally by definition, we are considered a mental health professional and my undergraduate degree was in psychology so this concept of like mental health is not new to me at all there's a difference between studying mental health and then dealing with um stigma in your own personal experience with mental health outside of your profession um if you would have asked me at any point during studying mental health if i you know believed in mental health and um you know, advocated for people addressing their mental health, I would have totally said, yes, of course, of course, what do you mean, of, of course. But when it came time to deal with my own mental health, it was a bit of a different story. And interesting enough, I was struggling with mental health, with my mental health um, in undergrad while studying it. So I'm, I'm studying the symptoms and um, all of these different diagnoses and all the things that are contributing to these mental health diagnoses. And then I'm going home, um, you know, I'm taking tests on them, and then I'm going home to my dorm and like dealing with these very symptoms that I'm talking about. But just wouldn't address them. Typically, um, most of us get an understanding of like mental health or get an opinion about it via our families and like the way we were raised. And my family never came out and said like, you know, we don't believe in mental health or, you know, nothing like that. Although it was common to hear in the church, like, you know, just pray about it. Like, you know, we pray about everything, which we should, don't get me wrong. Pray about it is absolutely a solution um you know coming to God and admitting this is what I'm dealing with saying it out loud but also getting support from people who are trained to be able to help you to deal with these things I think is just as important um so anyways I was saying that basically my family never came out and said we didn't believe it but I did get that message of you know just from, from whatever, maybe not even necessarily just my family, but just getting that message of if you deal with mental health things and you're, then you're crazy or you're weird or um, specifically as black women, I want to address that. I think we get the message of being a strong black woman, like that's glorified, you know, that's like a, a thing, especially on social media these days. It's like, I'm a strong black woman, you know, like having that persona is so like, it's glorified, but nobody recognizes that putting that pressure on ourselves as black women to be these rocks that everybody can lean on and like almost like the, the miracle workers and we just have the answer for everything and you know if you need it done call a black woman like okay yes but we are human too um and so society putting that pressure on us and then us putting that extra pressure on us that is detrimental let alone the fact that a lot of us grow up with that message that we have to be twice as good to get half as far like that's always been my case specifically for black women in higher education you know we're constantly fighting to be seen constantly trying to to I hate to say to outdo the next person we just have that pressure of like you have to look like like they do you have to sound like they do you have to be better at, at what and when I say they I let me be all the way clear that I am saying white people um, white women white men particularly in my field white women there is that pressure of you have if they can do it you have to be able to do it twice as good or else you won't you won't make it like you won't get where you want to go you won't get um, as far as they'll go if you're not doing it better than, than they would um, so I've always had that pressure always I feel like the the perfectionist syndrome is so common among black women it's 
almost like unattainable goal of perfection or always doing it better or always overachieving that literally I, I think has I know it, it for me it's made me ill like mentally um, it, it was contributing to excessive anxiety specifically for black girls who are in higher education um, like in my case I have been in college back to back y'all I, I feel like I say this so common but like it's just hilarious to me that I this is my seventh straight year of college like if I was counting my college experience like I had just started school I would be a sixth grader in school like that's how long I've been in college um and back to back and so always being in that environment of pressure of um overachieve of you know you have to be amazing you have to like that extra added pressure at all times literally made me sick it made me sick and so there's a few reasons why i want to bring this up to you guys today and why i'm being open about this experience one like i said i really want to break the stigma specifically among black women and encourage people who need it to go get help um number two is i want to encourage people to make this a regular thing like therapy should not be oh my gosh I'm in a crisis and oh my gosh now it just got to its absolute worst and now I'm gonna go um, get help like ugh. we should be just like you tune your car up every so often like that's what you need to do for your mental health like it's literally for your mind for your spirit for your soul you need that on a consistent basis um, and then the third thing is I really want to introduce to you guys the different ways that you can get this um, therapy I've been able to experience a variety of ways of receiving this therapy um, and so I want to just share so you guys can understand where you can get access to these resources so I'll start with just my journey of it so like I said I the pressures that I was putting on myself and the perfectionism and even the isolation. Uh, grad school can be very isolating, college in general, but really grad school the way it's set up. I was very isolated um, last fall when I, um, when I moved here. So I would go to class and I would go home and basically just be by myself. And um, the only really contact with people I had like on a relational level outside of like class was my friends and my family, you know, when we would FaceTime. So if I wasn't with them, I was literally sitting here and I don't have cable, just too much time in my own mind and not filling that time up with like something like a different voice in my head it was really just my voice in my head so i was able to start telling myself these messages that you know were negative and like just negative self-talk and there was nobody there to combat what i was saying really so i was so in my head and i was so isolated and it really was unhealthy so one of the things about my anxiety is that I clench my jaw really bad. So if I'm super stressed or I'm focusing really hard on something or like I'm worried about something, I clench my jaw but I don't recognize that I'm doing it until it's too late. Like I recognize I'm doing it when my jaw is literally pulsing from being in pain from the fact that I was clenching my jaw. So I would get like really bad toothaches. It really started like probably my junior year, I think of undergrad. And now it's just, it's like my staple thing. And I hate to say that and claim it like that, but it is like I recognize, like I know I'm worried about something or I'm super stressed out because my jaw will literally, I mean, it's like wah, 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 wah. And not only that, I'll get headaches from that. And I just found myself being able to get like really mad at myself. Like if I didn't do something right or if I knew better or you know, something didn't go according to plan or like if I just messed up somewhere, I I gave myself no grace I mean none like I would literally sometimes I would actually vocalize my anger with myself like just super frustrated with myself and could not let it go could not let it go like I would I would cry like even over something that's like is that even that deep but I would just be so upset with myself and I'm like this is getting to a point where it's unhealthy like my my eating I was kind of like binge eating like I would go a really long time without eating and then I would just eat a whole bunch of food. I knew I wasn't okay and it got to a point where I was like, I need, I think I need to talk to someone. Like I, I think I need some help because I, as much as I'm studying this stuff, it's harder to try to, to use 
those resources on yourself. There was a disconnect. And I really wasn't motivated. I wasn't motivated to get work done. I won't be beat it at horse, but it definitely wasn't in your space. So I ended up calling my university. Um, I forget, I think somebody recommended to me, I knew counseling services existed in Big Ten schools. I remember at IU, we had the, like the free, you get a certain amount of free sessions um, as a student with the counseling office on campus. And so I had my, you know, doubts because it's just like, you know, such a big campus, there's so many people, it's such a long waiting list to get in. So I was just like, what is the point? But I finally was like, okay, I need to, I need to speak to someone. And actually I want to shout out my friend Rachel Cargill because she was posting at the time, this is uh, last fall, so fall 2017, she's posting about just basically encouraging people to get into therapy and talking about her therapy experience. And I was like, you know what? I need to seek out some help. So I ended up calling and they call they call it a triage call, which is basically like a screener. Um, so I set it up online. I went online to Ohio State's uh, counseling um, website and made an appointment for the triage call. And then they called me. I will say also that I've, I've shared on here before that 2017 was probably the hardest year of my life. If you haven't seen my testimony video, go check that out uh, my testimony series but 2017 it almost took your girl out okay and I hadn't dealt with any of it like I kind of just like took the hit cried about it I realized that I was crying a lot that year but like it was a lot and I would just keep moving forward because like I can't sit down I can't stop which is also another characteristic of black women like we just take anything suck it up and keep it moving it's like girl that stuff is getting you on the inside and it's eating away at you and I just I hadn't dealt with it at all so um it all came out that when I was talking to the lady on the triage call and literally this call is supposed to be like 30 minutes I think it's supposed to be 15 and maybe mine was 30 whatever it was I realized while I was talking to this lady like, oh my gosh, girl, you got a lot going on. Based on that call, she actually recommended the, uh, they call it the Colorful Women Therapy Group. It's a therapy group on campus. It's available through our counseling services, and it's specific to black women who are in graduate school. So they have one for undergrads and then uh, one for graduate slash professional students. And she asked if that was something I'd be interested in. And I was like, okay, I think so. But in my head, I'm like, y'all, it literally took so much for me to make this call because I, I really was facing the fact like, oh no, you hold these stigmas in your heart. Like, you hold these stigmas against mental health. Like, you're concerned about who's gonna know that you made this call or that you're in a group, like in a therapy group. I was literally concerned. I was having a hard time with that. And so I finally, you know, like I said, I finally made the call. And, you know, even when she recommended to me, I said I was open. She said, she would send me the information she told me about where I could get some individual counseling set up as well and I was like okay so she sent me the information told me she was going to contact the leader of the colorful the therapist that runs the colorful women group and y'all the lady emailed me and I ignored that email <laughs> this is like maybe November I ignored that email I think I replied like the first time and she asked to like set up a 15 minute or 30 minute little meeting maybe over coffee or something so she could get an understanding of just kind of where I was coming from to make sure the group would be a good fit and y'all when I tell you I was dipping and dodging like I did not reply to that email and finally she emailed me back um, in January and said okay the group is about to start you know I just want to double check and see if you're interested and I was like okay baby just do it. Y'all, I started this group in January and it has literally flipped my experience upside down. And this year, I went through some things in the spring that were tough. And having that group of like, just first of all, popping black women, like, and we're all in there. It, it's not about being, you know, crazy or whatever. Like, we can be honest. We talk about our experiences specifically as black women. What are we facing on this campus that's unique to our experience? The hurdles that we have to jump through. Um, the microaggressions we face on the daily. Imposter syndrome. Like, and to hear, that's another powerful thing about a group. It was amazing to to hear the your experiences validated in other women. So one thing about isolation that is really unique to isolation is that you really convince yourself that you're the only one dealing with that. Like I literally was convinced that I was the only one like talking to myself like that, dealing with imposter syndrome and all these things. I didn't even know what imposter syndrome was. I mean, I went in there and described it and she was like, have you ever heard of imposter syndrome? And I was like, what? And then so many other women sharing that they feel the same way. And it has literally, oh my gosh, we laugh. I've gone in there and cried my little eyes out. Like we back each other up, we celebrate each other. And it's just like, when I'm in there, it's like a just, it's like a bubble of, 
safety, but not safety as in comfort. Like you, you get challenged just the way you, you need to be challenged. Like you hear from people and their experiences and, and the, you hear the things that they can contribute to your experience. Like being in that therapy group has, has blessed my whole life. And literally it connected me to other black women on campus. And so then they would introduce me to other people and say, hey, have you tried this? I got connected with the Black Graduate Caucus through um, somebody in that group. Um, and when I went, she was like, she knew my own personal goals of like, you know, connecting with people and stuff. So while I was there, like I was trying to dip out, she took my hand like, nah, girl, you gonna come over here and we gonna introduce you to some people. Like you gonna say hello to a few folks. I'm gonna introduce you because I know like, I know your tendencies. Uh, based on what I had shared in the group and it was so special y'all and we're getting through it together and getting through this season of our life Together and just having somebody to bounce that off with it's been amazing um, And then in at the end of September, I think or early October I started individual sessions with um, a black woman and um, Y'all I just it, it, as if my experience in the therapy group wasn't enough the individual sessions just took me overboard and I love therapy now. Like I look forward to it. Um, my next one is actually coming up on Monday at two and I am like, I look forward to it. And I think about things that I want to address when I'm in there. And it's just something about having a black woman counselor, y'all. I, I don't know what else to tell you. Like there's some things I was able to say to her that I didn't have to explain and like, the, the feedback that she was able to give from our particular perspective. Like, I get it, like being black and being a woman is not a monolithic experience. I understand that, but th there's still value in the fact that she understood where I was coming from and could speak to those specific things. And just, we just had so many moments, we clicked right away. And you know, you're always nervous, you know, the first time of meeting someone, like how much can I share? Like, what is it gonna look like? Child, the first meeting, I left there like, I done told this lady my whole life. <laughs> And then I look like, this gotta be magic. Like, what kind of sorcery is this? I couldn't find the solution out there, but I'm sitting in front of you and I can talk myself into what I know I need to be doing. It's crazy. Like, it is absolutely crazy. So, I can honestly say, like, the stigma has been lifted for me. Like, I don't mind telling people that I'm in therapy. I'm doing this video to share with you all that, yes, I'm in therapy. I do individual and group counseling. And it has been such a wonderful experience. And um, Ohio State students specifically get 10 free sessions with the counseling office on campus. Bet you didn't know that. So I have all the information for what you need to get started if you are at Ohio State for you to get started with um, counseling. Um, and honestly, like I said, I did my triage call in November and got started in January. It was my choice to wait to do the individual counseling until September because I think I still had a little bit of a stigma around doing individual sessions because like group is like, okay, we could just be like a social club, but you know, doing individuals like, oh no, you go to therapy. <laughs> so, but once I got over that hump, now I'm like, hey, everybody need a therapist. You need a therapist. You need a therapist. Everybody need a therapist. I was trying to get my parents on therapist back home. I really, really encourage you. Even if you don't feel like, you know, there's a whole lot going on or whatever, get a tune up. Go once every few months, you know, go once every six months, whatever it is, whatever works for you incorporate that into your life also even if you're not at Ohio State look into your university type in you know whatever your university's name is and maybe counseling services or something like that I know for a fact okay I don't know for a fact but almost every university everyone that I know of and or have ever interacted with has a counseling service offers free sessions a certain amount of free sessions to their students they will get you in. There is a way for that to happen. So make sure that you look up that information. Make me a promise on my people that are watching. If you're still watching at this point, you're committed to me. So uh, make me a promise that you will look into where you can get those services. If you are not at a university, there are options. Um, even just looking up mental health counselors in your community. And if you can't afford it, I want to let you know about a movement that I'm just throwing Rachel all over this video. But my friend Rachel Cargo, <laughs> once again, Again. Um, she's an amazing activist that has grown quite a significant audience on social media and she used her platform as I knew she would to do amazing things already and she she has raised over a hundred thousand
thousand, count them, a hundred thousand dollars for therapy for black girls. So for those who can't afford it, who need this, these services, like I said, there's so many unique things that we face in this world as Americans, as black women in America. So many extra added pressures that it's like, we be here, like we know and other people can't understand. That is why she put this effort together to raise money for you. Yes, you, I don't care where you are, if you need services, you can contact me and let me know. You can contact her directly, but they are putting together a network to basically disperse this money to mental health um, professionals so that money can actually reach you specifically for whatever however many sessions you want to do whatever so if that's something that interests you and you don't have a connection to a university or some other way to get that counseling please let me know if you don't want to put it in the comment section hit me up on my Instagram account my Twitter DMs whatever you wherever you can reach me let me know and I will do my best to get you connected with those services but everybody watching everybody watching needs a therapist so I hope I've reached my goal with this video and I'm really wishing I had been in therapy far before I needed it as bad as I did when I first started but I will say that I've noticed a tangible difference in um, my spirit in the way I carry myself in my stress level my anxiety levels all of that and I actually took the screener um, once again when I started my individual sessions so I took the screener back in January when I first started and the rates on some of the things were very were very tough um, I think I was at risk or showing signs of I know anxiety depression um, and there was even a, an eat, not eating disorder as to say I had an eating disorder but I was I think I was at risk for an eating disorder um, in January when I first went and I, I really don't mind sharing these with you guys I'm trying to be open when I took that same screener oh, I'm not about to cry when I took that same screener um, when I started individual sessions my numbers had gone up I think by like or something significant to where um, anxiety is still unfortunately a, a area that was highlighted but the other two were reduced significantly and the eating disorder issue um, or being at risk for an eating disorder actually went away um, and so that was just amazing for me to see that this is actually working and I wanted to share that with you guys just so you could hear my perspective as a black woman and what therapy is doing for me so that's all I have for you guys today please let me know in the comment section if this impacted you in any way if you're thinking about doing therapy and haven't started what are you waiting for drop that down in the comments maybe something you're dealing with something that's holding you back whatever your specific feeling is about why you haven't just taken a leap to do therapy but again I hope this encouraged you I hope this motivated you to do what you need to do for your mental health your mental health matters especially my black women sis your mental health matters we can be strong black queens but we also need therapy we can be strong black queens but we also need to learn how to give ourselves grace how to give ourselves opportunities to rest like we we need that so enough said subscribe if you enjoyed this i hope to see you guys in my next video please make sure you like share with somebody that you know if they have doubts they have questions show them this video show them that it's totally possible show them that this could be a huge huge blessing in their life and i will see you guys in the next video bye